David Skarika is the editor of the Gold Stock Advisor, a monthly Newsmax and Money News newsletter on profitable investing in gold mining stocks. He joins us now on the phone. Welcome back, David. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Greece continues to rattle European markets, and now Italy is causing major concerns. Can the Eurozone climb out of this hole, and what does that mean for gold especially? I think the problem we're going to have in the Eurozone continually going forward is, is kind of the have, have not uh, case, where you, know, you have Germany and France and the Netherlands and countries like this, which are actually seeing their bonds rally and interest rates decline. And then you've got, you know, kind of the poor uh, brothers and sisters of, you know, Spain, Italy, obviously Portugal, Ireland, and Greece. And they're seeing the rates spike and actually downgrade to junk status and the whatnot. So it's going to be a difficult balancing act uh, for, you know, Europe to kind of perform. Um, and obviously when that happens, with the U.S. printing as much money as it is and Europe trying to solve this debt crisis, I think the flea is to gold, and I think that's shown since really the euro crisis began to boil up again in June, uh, you know, with the downgrade of Greece to debt and the whatnot, that we're seeing this flight to gold because of the problem in both the U.S. and Europe. So I actually think it's not just the European debt crisis, and when people look across the pond and they see, you know, all the problems with the debt ceiling and just the deficit itself in the United States, Gold will be a, a continued benefactor of that. Will the dollar ever regain its safe haven status it enjoyed for so long, or can a dollar rally even last? Um, I think dollar rallies are very short-term in nature. I think the one thing you have to look uh, positively at what's going on in the Eurozone is essentially all these countries that are in trouble now have to tackle their debt problems with austerity measures, meaning cutting spending, raising taxes, getting those budget gaps down. And because the dollar is a reserve stat status, we've seen a real reluctance to do this in the United States. And I think actually the central bank in the United States wants to devalue the currency. So I see that any rallies against the euro, the pound, uh, Aussie, Canadian dollar, any rally in the U.S. dollar is short-term in nature and will be met with continued weakness. And it's not just a forced weakness. It's uh, the fact that you know, the, the, the central bank in the United States wants to weaken the dollar to try to re, say, stimulate the economy or lending or manufacturing. Does gold remain a hedge of choice for those looking for shelter from inflation? Oh, oh yeah, I think that uh, gold, I think that we're in a unique uh, time frame of history. That This is not just an inflation hedge. And definitely we're seeing inflation increase all the way around the world. Uh, the United States has seen an uptick. All the European nations are reporting higher than an expected inflation. Obviously, there's a uh, severe inflation problem with China and India. And uh, gold is, is, you know, where people go to in times of inflation because it protects your wealth because it can't be printed away like uh, paper dollars. But I think it's more than just that right now. I think it's just that you've seen the Euro nations print currency to bail out their, uh, their troubled uh, countries. When you're seeing the United States print money, uh, we're seeing countries all over the world print money. It's also a monetary issue right now where people just don't trust a lot of fiat and paper currencies, and they're going to gold to protect themselves not only against, like, say, CPI increases, but to protect themselves against the decline in the value of paper currency. Some say China's inflation rates may be peaking, while Europe is raising interest rates to cool rising consumer prices there. What role do those factors play in today's gold market? I think the big problem in China and India, and I don't want to blame everything on the United States because China had very, very loose monetary policy in the last few years, but with the U.S. being the reserve currency and with the devalue in its currency, it, that increases these commodity prices. And commodity prices are much more sensitive to people at the bottom of the economic ladder. And, you know, those would be the poor in China and India. And we're seeing these big CPIs or, you know, sorry, inflation increases in those two countries. So the problem you're getting, as long as the United States remains loose, that increases inflation all the way around the world, the export inflation. So it's really difficult for me to see, at least China's trying to tackle the inflation problem, but for me to see China, Chinese inflation peaking if the United States continues to be loose, and that increases oil prices, gold prices, wheat prices, etc., that is going to continue to increase the rate of inflation in places like China and India going forward. So I think until the, until the United States starts some kind of fiscal and monetary austerity, you're going to continue to see high inflation rates in both the first and third world. How can investors recognize the difference between a correction and an end to a bull run in gold? Um, I, I, I use one simple indicator, and I talk about this in my book, The Great Super Cycle. I've talked about this at length in my uh, 
publications, Gold Stock Advisor and Addicted to Profits, that basically when we have seen tops in gold in 1932 and in 1980 um, and bottoms in the stock market, that it took only one ounce of gold, roughly one ounce of gold, to buy, uh, you know, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Well, even with this run in gold, with gold almost at 1,600 today, and the Dow at roughly, you know, 12 to 13,000, it still takes eight ounces of gold to buy one share of the Dow. So when we get that level down to one to one, and I don't know where they'll meet. They could meet at 3,000, they could meet at 5,000, they could meet at a billion if the Federal Reserve keeps printing money like crazy and creates hyperinflation. But when they meet at roughly one to one, I think that is the end of the gold bull market. And that's just, that is when you want to shift your profits from gold into Dow Industrial and S&P stock. Are paper currencies ever going to have the same attraction they had before the crisis? I think they will. I think at some point you're going to see um, sound money come back. I think the only thing that's going to solve the worldwide financial and monetary crisis is some form of a gold standard where currencies are, again, linked to the price of gold. And I think after we see this kind of inflationary holocaust going forward, you're going to see that happen. And I think you already have seen that, like, you know, uh, natural resource-based economies, economies that maybe don't link their currency to resources but are um, are, are – met positively when resource prices go up, like Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, they're increasing in value, you know, compared to the U.S. dollar. So I think at some point, if you see this crash in the dollar, it might not be a crash overnight, it might take five or ten years, and higher prices, you might see a forced link to the price of gold somewhere uh, going forward, and we could again see sound money in our lifetime. Lawmakers in the White House are still negotiating lifting the debt ceiling. Now, should they agree at the last minute can markets breathe a sigh of relief? Well, my personal view is the debt ceiling should be abolished because no other country in the world has a debt ceiling. And with the debt at over $14 trillion, obviously having a debt ceiling is not keeping the politicians in line. So I don't see the point of it any further. But with that said, I really believe there will be a, uh, you know, uh, a deal at the last hour. Probably what will happen is moderate Democrats and moderate Republicans will get together and Greece, uh, uh, agree on some form of mild austerity. I think it will still be too mild, uh, and their hand will be forced by the markets in the coming years. But, yes, I do see um, uh, uh, some resolution to the, uh, to, to the debt ceiling problem, because if you don't do it, you're going to default on your debt, and the U.S. essentially becomes Greece overnight. Federal Reserve minutes show that some policymakers might favor more monetary stimulus. Did QE1 and QE2 work at all? Well, really, it's QE2 and 3, because the first QE is when they printed money to take on all the garbage mortgage securities when Wall Street uh, blew up in 2008. With that said, um, I, don't really, I think it did work somewhat, because part of their plan was to get asset markets up to recreate somewhat of a wealth effect. And the problem is with unemployment, where it is, you don't have as many people invested in the stock market as, say, 10 years ago when everything was booming. Um, so I think it worked in that regard, and it's working in that I don't know if the federal government could fund itself at these levels, $1.5 trillion deficits, without the Fed buying bonds. But we have to remember, they're not getting rid of the QE. They're rotating that money back into the bond market. So QE3, 4, 5, 6 is irrelevant to me because they have $1.2 trillion uh, printed that they're just rotating back in, and they might print more. Right now, I think we're in QE affinity. And they're essentially doing, in maybe a more structured way, what the Weimar Republic did in the early 20s. They're just printing money to pay off their own debt. So, yeah, I don't see QE ending anytime soon until they get the fiscal house in order. And I don't see that under the current regime uh, happening for at least, you know, you know it, in, unless there's a change in uh, the, the regime's way of thinking or a new regime next year after the election. What would another quantitative easing mean for gold? Um, I, I think that would be, again, I think gold is going up because of this problem in the dollar longer term. Remember, gold went up It's from 2000 to 2007, 2008, before any quantitative easing. It's been almost tripled in that time frame. So I don't think that's the reason gold's going up in value. I think people are very mistaken. But that just adds to the inflationary fire. So gold will continue to go up, maybe at an even more rapid pace, if they start a QE3. David Skarika, thanks so much as always. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching Money News.